Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This video, we're gonna be talking about how to use Quick SQL to build out a data structure inside of Apex. Super easy and it should be a lot of fun. But first, let's talk a little bit more about the purpose of Quick SQL, you know, besides making SQL quick. When would you want to use this? Well, if we first go back to the SQL workshop, you can actually create tables over here on the right under create object, you can select table and you can go through these menu options Put your columns and your types and go through each step and then you'll have a table and that works if you don't have any experience and you need to get a table made from scratch this might be the way for you but honestly this can be a lot of added work when you have to create numerous tables and you have to go through all of these steps for every single one not to mention you might need to know a little bit more about the data types and so forth so what's the other option well the other option is to type in the sql directly so if you know the, the SQL code to create the tables you need, you can do that here. But this requires a lot of knowledge on SQL and how to design different relationships across tables. So if you don't have the knowledge to do the SQL directly, or you just don't feel like putting forth the effort, then Quick SQL is for you. So, so to find it, you can go to the SQL workshop, and then utilities, and then you go into Quick SQL. Now if you're first getting started, what you can do is you can click samples, and you can see what something might look like. So what we'll do is we'll go to this uh, employee skills and we'll uh, load it. So what is going on here essentially? Well, this is basically describing a company. We have departments, we have employees, and these employees have skills. And you can see over on the right, the SQL that is created from this. Basically, we create a table, we define the column and the data type and any other attributes with it as well. And over on the left is the shorthand way to do it where you just put the column and occasionally you will put a data type so you can look at these samples to get a little bit of practice seeing how it would be done. Or what you can do is you can follow along with this awesome video and I'm gonna go through an example with you guys. So let's X out of this, let's get rid of this junk and let's start fresh. So what I wanna do is I want to model an application for books. So these books are going to have a title, they're gonna have an ISBN and they're gonna be authored by a sequence of people. So it might look something like this. You type out books, press enter, and then you tab over and start putting the columns. So for example, we can have a title, an ISBN, and you can see on the right, this is generated, even an ID column is created for us. The appropriate data type is selected. And even if we do something such as publication date, it's uh, intelligent enough to know that we're trying to have a date here. Now for the 4,000, this basically means that's the maximum size. That might be a bit much, I don't know of any books that are 4,000 characters long, but you can shorten it by saying VC255, which is going to make it varchar 255 maximum. Then what you do is you can click generate SQL. You will need to click this button if you're not pressing enter. So when you press enter, it'll, it'll update for you, but sometimes you don't wanna do that. And in that case, you can just click the button. Now books can have authors. So what we can do is say authors, and what we're going to do is we're going to tab over again, and this is going to create another table for the authors. So we can say first name, last name, and you can see in this situation, I put a space and it's automatically going to put an underscore. If, if you wanna manually put in the underscore, that's fine as well. Now with this structure, a book is allowed to have many authors because that author is stored in a different table with a reference back to book ID. This protects our data integrity. Now, if you're new to this, the next statement you can probably just ignore for now, but I'm just gonna throw something out there. If you would prefer not to have repeating author names across books and would prefer those to be references, you can do that and you would essentially need to design this as a many-to-many -many relationship. I have other videos on this, but essentially what you would need to do is you need to create another table such as book authors and inside of here you're going to have a book ID and an author ID. And then you can go create an author table which will be referenced by this. And then the combination of these would be the primary key. So yeah, again, going into the grain a little bit here. In this situation, I'm not really going to worry about any data redundancy. I'm just going to have the authors in a separate table. So that way we can have numerous authors. So if we take a look at this, we have the books here, and then we have the authors here. The book ID and the authors table can be repeated because there might be 10 authors for a single book. And in that situation, we would have 10 rows with the same book ID, each one with a different first name, last name. Essentially, one book can have many authors. 
So that is your introduction to Quick SQL. What we're going to be doing in the next video is we're going to be finishing out this script. We're going to add a little bit more and talk a bit more about the capabilities and we're going to create a view as well. So it's going to be pretty exciting. Please be sure to check out the video and don't forget to subscribe. Peace out.